All right, this is second grade module seven, lesson one. And in this lesson, we start off the full on module where students are gonna be problem solving with length, money, and data. Uh, we're gonna begin with a series of lessons where we really focus on data. And today in this lesson, students are gonna be sorting and recording data in a table using up to four categories. So basically, they get to start classifying and categorizing and sorting things. Uh, this is a great opportunity, parents and teachers, to maybe even uh, not do the homework as assigned and instead somehow customize the lessons so that students can really express their own interests. Maybe instead of talking about animals, you allow some students to talk about sports because that's what they care about, or others can talk about uh, books because that's what they care about. So really, this is a great opportunity to consider customizing it, <clears throat> this lesson, and really meeting the needs of your kids from that emotional, affective point of view. So let's get started. So we start with just classic categorizing, and the directions say to count and categorize each picture to complete the table with tally marks. And uh, parents and teachers, wh what we mean by tally marks is that classic concept of going one, two, three, four, five, and then, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and we want to do them in groups of five like this. Uh, I don't think we have to go count that high on this specific problem, but this is the kind of thing that we want students to be talking about uh, and organizing their tallies as well. So let's see. This guy has two legs, so I'm going to cross him off, and I'm going to put a tally right there. This guy has four legs, so I'm going to put a tally. This guy has two legs, so I'm going to put a tally in the two. Or polar bear, I guess, is what it looks like. Has four legs, so I'll put a tally in the four. Nice flamingo has two legs, so I'll put it right there. Big old lion has four legs, so I'll put a tally right here. And lastly, ooh, a snake has no legs, so we're going to put it right there. Now, parents and teachers, you'll notice we didn't cross over a five, so we never had to... Uh, put a cross there, but that's the idea, and we want students to also really maybe even give students an opportunity to think about how are they going to organize their their um, counting so that they don't accidentally count an animal twice. You'll notice I used to, I crossed them off like that. Allow your students the opportunity to figure out how to do their own organization. I don't want them to just blindly copy me. So here we have the animal habitats table right here. And we're supposed to use this table to answer the following questions. So uh, how many animals live in the Arctic? And we're going to look and we can see, oh, well, there is no legend up here. So we're assuming that this means six animals. Um, so we're going to put six right there. How many animals have habitats in the forest and grasslands? in the forest and grassland. So that's that's the big thing. So we're going to add, and so we're going to add both the 11 and the 9. So 11 plus 9 gives us 20. So we're going to put 20 right here. How many, anim uh, how many fewer animals have Arctic habitats than forests? So the idea is we are going to be subtracting. So we want to know the difference between 6 and 11. A couple of ways we could do that. We could either think about it as 11 minus 6 equals this, or we could think of it as addition. 6 plus something gives us 11. So parents and teachers, allow your students the opportunity to talk about how they thought about it. It's more than just getting the answer of 5. Give your students the opportunity to talk about how they got that answer. That's really just as important as getting the right answer itself. How many more animals? Now, the other thing I want you all to notice, some key vocabulary, and right here, fewer, more. Uh, these are all word wall things, uh, words that we would put on the wall, especially for our English language learners. So heads up on that. You might want to just, as you come across an important word, write it on a piece of paper and stick it on your word wall. How many more animals would need to be in the grasslands 
to have the same number as the Arctic and forest categories combined. So right here is 17, and we want to know 9, and I'm going to put it down here, 9 plus what gives us 17? And again, allow your students the opportunity to talk about how they would figure that the answer is 8. And lastly, how many total animal, animal habitats were used? So we're going to add 6 plus 11 plus 9. Well, we already know that 11 plus 9 is 20 from a previous problem, so we just have to add in that extra 6, and we get 26. So it's the idea. Parents and teachers, it's more than just getting the answer. Allow your students plenty of opportun opportunities to just talk about how they got the answers. Sometimes they're going to use subtraction. Sometimes they're going to use addition, and it's always worthwhile to let your kids talk about it. And that wraps up second grade module seven, lesson one, where students are sorting and recording data. And uh, parents and teachers, I want you to consider allowing your students to come up with their own items and categories.